Hello. Hi, Rohit. Uh, maybe we can give it a start. Let me share my screen. One minute. Okay. Uh, yes. So until last day, we have looked into one form of ridge regression. Okay. Now, I just wanted to just for uh, a trial because we have done that for all the other cases. So we should ideally do this in this case also. Before we progress with lasso regression and before we progress with uh, another very important method that I would like to introduce right now or at this stage only because later... Uh, uh, this this method is something which we will almost always be using, almost always be using when it comes to uh, the classification use cases, right? So uh, I thought, why not have a look into this right now? And then we can uh, go ahead with the classification use cases or the other type of supervised learning. So uh, hopefully if all goes well, today will be the last session uh, with respect to regression. If we miss out something, we will continue. Uh, let's say tomorrow quickly. Else from, uh, let's say tomorrow, we will start with the classification use cases, right? Uh, so I just wanted to do one quick thing and that quick thing is as simple as I just wanted to scale the data once and I wanted to run ridge regression on top of it because we have followed that as a principle for all of our findings, right? So for all of our findings, we have done that, then why not, uh, why not one more time? So what I would like to do is as simple as uh, I'll define another one, LM. Okay, so just a moment. Have I scaled it already? Let me see. No, 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 no. I have not scaled it already. Okay, good. So what was LM6 then? LM5, then I started with six, then I started, then I did seven, then I did eight. Okay, so now I'm going to do LM9 is equal to ridge. Okay, and now I have X, which is this, right? X, X, all the data and Y, which is this, right? So I'm going to do an X scaled. Let's see if I already have X scaled, I believe I do, but uh, just for brevity, I'm going to create it once more. So I'm going to do, let's say, a standardized scalar. Okay. So fit, transform, and then I'm going to pass X. Okay. So I'm going to use this as X scaled. Uh, okay. And then what I'm going to do, X train, this time it will be nine. Yeah. So I'm going to take this X test Y train Y test is equal to train test split x scaled comma y and then uh, a random state one zero one right so i have got my data so i just want to see if i have got it correctly or not yeah so it's it's a scaled data right that i have broken down right so i'm not going into that shape thing anymore so, so what i'm going to do i'm going to directly fit my model so lm underscore nine dot fit using x train nine y train underscore nine right i have now fit my ridge uh, regression model with alpha equal to one okay then i might change alpha as well but let's see let's see how how this alpha is going to do right so or maybe what we could do is that until the last one, um, 0 0.01 was a good score, right? In the last case. So why not we do this from the beginning also? So alpha is equal to 0 0.01, right? So I'm just going to break this down and I'm going to do this. And then let's do y pred 
underscore nine is equal to lm underscore nine. Sorry, is equal to lm underscore nine dot predict x test nine. Right. So now I have got the uh, uh, the prediction. So why not do an R two score with respect to y pred nine and y test nine. So I have got an R square score of sixty. It did not improve. Right. What about the mean squared errors? Okay, mean squared error of this. I'm just going to do a quick copy paste over here to see how it is going. It is exactly the same. So what I'm going to write over here in our data set, even with scaling or standard scaling of variables, we did not uh, or we were not able to improve our model. Right? Will that improve with min-max scaling? We don't know. We can have a look right into that as well. Right? But let's continue. Maybe I'll leave that over to you to have a look. Now, what we are going to look at is a different kind of regression, known as lasso regression. Okay. So, what is lasso regression? I'm going to take a diagram which is similar to this, and then I can explain. Okay. So. Uh, specifically, lasso is actually not a regression technique. Okay, so in statistics world, lasso is a technique which is used for uh, uh, regularization. And now we have already discussed in the last session as well that regularization is basically a process, an activity which we do to ensure that we have minimum errors. And how we do that is by finding out those weights which are constituting. Okay, which are constituting more towards the errors. So we had an equation, if you remember, y is equal to uh, theta zero plus theta one x one plus theta two x two until theta n x n. Now I just want to know out of these theta one x one, theta two x two, and so on, what is that one multiplicated or what is that one component which is adding to most of the error? So if I am able to reduce the weight of that one component, then I can reduce the error to the maximum. Right, rather than trying to tune each and every weight and each and every combination of features, it is easier to find out which one weight or which one feature is leading to most error, and then I can either get rid of it, right, or I can try to uh, reduce the error, right. So that's what uh, we are trying to do. Uh, let me just do one thing. I don't know why this default is selected as. Bing, so thanks. So I'm going to do. Okay. So I'm just going to search for lasso regression, and I get a statistics how to page. It's a very good website. I really like this. Although, although uh, in this case, Wikipedia also does a very good job, right? I will not go into how to develop lasso regression models right now, but I would strongly recommend you. I would strongly recommend you to look into these videos. I don't know whether I've heard. So maybe I'll just paste it in the chat window. So there is a channel in YouTube known as StatQuest. Okay, it's a very very good channel because using very simple and real life or practical examples, this person is able to explain a lot of concepts. So I would strongly recommend that you can look into his explanations of what is exactly lasso regression and so on. Right. So uh, it will give you a better understanding. Right, but what lasso regression really means, as simple as, I am going to regularize my errors by creating areas, otherwise known as lassos, and those areas are from where I am going to select, okay, or I am going to concentrate myself only at that area which is causing me less error. Right. So, for example, it is as simple as you are inside a house, or you are inside a room in your house. Where you have a lot of items, and they are really distracting you. So you have a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, a lot of uh, things to play around with. A lot of things that your kids are playing with. A lot of things your uh, family members are doing, and so on. Right. So you have a lot of things, but then you are 
or you would like to concentrate only on one course or one book or one simple task it is very difficult because there is a lot of noise so what you do is or what you can do right is that in that big house of yours let's say there is there are no rooms there is only one huge hall in that house and you want to sit into a separate place you want to sit into a different place and you just want to concentrate on your work while sitting at that place okay so it might be let's say a corner in the house where you have secluded yourself and you are only you are not really looking at anyone else who is there in the room you are looking at a corner of uh, of the wall okay so you have cornered yourself so that all you can see is the wall and all you can work on is your laptop and in there you are actually trying to concentrate on that book or on that uh, pdf file which you are trying to read right so this is exactly what lasso tries to do and then we have to control the way it does that okay so let's go into the definition so lasso regression is basically again it uses the concept of shrinkage okay again just like uh, ridge regression again it is going to use the concept of shrinkage and it's again going to look for that specific variable right that specific variable which it is either going to select or it is going to eliminate the rest so that okay so that it can find an absolute shrinkage right an absolute shrinkage is what in terms of lasso or what it understands as an absolute shrinkage is where it cannot go beyond that point when it comes to reducing the error which is there in the model right so basically by shrinkage that word shrinkage in this context refers to how much this type of uh, the, the model that we are creating how much this type of model was able to reduce the error which was there in my model and by reducing the error i might well end up complicating my model right i might well end up complicating my model a little bit which is okay as long as i am able to explain it then it will work now the most basic similarity this is where people get confused between ridge and the lasso regression is is that they both okay they both are well suited in case of or in case of situations where you have a high and you have a very very high uh multicollinearity problem right so whenever you have a multicollinearity problem right you will face that uh, you, you will usually see that a ridge or a lasso regression is actually helping you more maybe our use case was not where we had the uh, the multicollinearity within the variables or maybe the variety the variation in our data set was actually linear this is the reason why for our case maybe even after we have applied so it may not help right but it usually works very well when you have a lot of business variables or you have a lot of variables which can ultimately result one another or impact one another that's where lasso regression really shines right now what does it exactly do okay let's come to the point it's one type of l1 regularization if you remember in the last session also we talked that there were two kinds of regularization methods which are trying to okay which are trying to reduce the errors which is trying to regularize okay which is trying to uh, strictly speaking uh, put some kind of control on top of your model right exactly what you are trying to do when you were sitting in that room looking at the corner of the wall you are trying to put some kind of it's a discipline on top of you so that you are not easily distracted with the fact that there might be 20 children playing in that flat right so what you are trying to do is that maybe you have put on noise cancellation kind of a headphone you may or may not really be listening to any music but you have simply put it up so that no noise comes to your ears and then what you are effectively doing is you are only looking at the corner of the wall so that nobody distracts you and you are concentrating on your book on on your laptop and this is exactly okay this is exactly what lasso regression tries to do on the other hand regression okay ridge regression also did the same thing but it is a type of l2 regularization now what is the basic difference between these two things l1 regularization is where it adds up nlt okay to the coefficients as if they are giving an exam and there are negative scores 
so you can imagine that you have five friends of yours and five of you are actually giving an exam and in that exam i am the invigilator of the person who is setting the rules and i have told you that for each and every wrong answer i am going to deduct your mark so there will be negative marking right so this is one kind of exam maybe this is if i faintly remember at some point in time gre used to follow this so if you do it right if you answer the questions correctly maybe it was plus 2 or plus 3 and if you do it incorrectly then it was maybe minus 1 or minus 0.5 i don't exactly remember and i don't exactly also remember whether the really this example is right or not but i do faintly remember there were some exam like gre or gmat or something uh, other than cat okay cat never re- used to penalize you and then later maybe they started doing it right so there is one exam that you and your five friends are giving where you are actually penalized penalized whenever you are doing a wrong answer that is the case which we do in l1 regularization we add a penalty to the model which is in line with how much the model or the weights in that model or the coefficients in that model is contributing to the errors right which ultimately means that i am going to okay i'm going to be very strict out of those five friends of yours including you as to who is the best student or who is actually going to pass or is actually going to fail right so if you are cheating or if you are let's say doing it out of your mind or maybe you are simply using your thought process to uh, appear in the exam and then at later stage you might well find yourself in a in a very bad kind of situation because you may have failed why because i have penalized you now what is the outcome of this penalization that i have done is that out of 5 maybe only 2 students will pass and three will fail because the number of questions that they have actually given wrong has deducted so many marks out of their uh, total marks is where they have lost a lot of marks and then they have failed so in case of l1 regularization method the prima facie objective is you penalize students whoever is giving wrong answers and you get rid of the students sounds very bad right really very bad you should not treat uh, uh, your students in that way I, i never do but this is what l1 the regularization does to make its life simple so rather than a professor saying i'll uh, i'm going to concentrate on 500 students the professor is going to take a test an entrance test right so rather than uh, concentrating on 1 lakh students or trying to teach 1 lakh students universities usually conduct an entrance test and only the top 10 or top 20 are selected now here what i am doing in case of l1 regularization is to select the top 20 i am actually getting rid of the next 80 if there are 100 users or 100 students who have appeared for the exam i am keeping the top 20 by eliminating the rest 80 so that's the main objective of doing l1 regularization where the more the penalty is the coefficient value gets closer to zero right so for example let me take a pen and let me say that i have a model which is y no i'm not going to do this let me just use a text box so i have a model which is y is equal to theta 0 plus theta 1 x1 plus theta 2 x2 plus until theta n xn right so let's say this this one thing let's say uh, i'll take just one example let's say this t1 x1 and tn xn okay these two terms these two coefficients these two weights are actually contributing a lot to the errors so what i say i add this this data this output or i somehow do a calculation that calculation looks similar to this okay the calculation looks similar to this where i have added two features one is the tuning feature which is my lambda and then i have a beta right so i have a beta and i have a lambda lambda is something which i have already uh, is just kind of a controlling factor of my experiment we will explain that and then i have a coefficient which is beta beta is a similar coefficient like alpha which we have used in the regression so alpha in the ridge regression is beta in the lasso regression okay so that's the parameter 
okay that's the parameter y means of which you are actually penalizing the model so if you have penalized this coefficient then this value the value of this coefficient tends to zero and if the value of this coefficient tends to zero right it is quite clear if the value of this coefficient tends to zero right then this entire term also goes to zero right which means let's say you have n number of terms so let's say n is equal to you have let's say 50 terms so you have 50 terms out of which let's say 30 30 are those students who did a lot of mistakes in their exam so i'm eliminating them so you are left off with only 20 features where we can concentrate the l1 regularization ultimately is going to make my model simpler it is going to make my model more simpler in case i have 50 variables okay and then i come down to right i come down to only 20 variables right so the, this is what is clearly explained a larger penalties will result in coefficient values to get closer to zero which is ideal okay this is a very important line ideal for producing simpler models why because instead of 50 coefficients now you have only 20 very easily or it's not really that easy i mean if you go in front of a business person and explain him 20 variables it will be difficult but then at least you don't have to explain the 50 variables thing right now, on the other hand on the other hand a ridge regression was an l2 regularization because i never told you that in ridge regression i'm going to get rid of features right i never got rid of features in that case i simply assigned them with a value and that value was what alpha and an identity matrix if you remember so i had an alpha i had an alpha and an identity matrix right using the combination of alpha and the identity matrix or k and the identity matrix in the equation it was written as k into y so we represented k is equal to alpha when it came to uh, the scikit learn implementation right so we just use an identity matrix and k value and there we have not gotten rid of anything we have not gotten rid of any coefficient we have simply given them a score so now you can consider ridge regression as a different exam where you and your five students go to an exam ideal condition nobody will fail right because there is no negative marking i'm not going to give you any negative marking if you have answered it correctly i'm going to give you a plus number if you have not answered it you get a zero simple right you get a zero if you have not answered so ultimately everybody let's say it's a a, a test out of 100 you will see that at least four out of five of you will score more than the passing marks okay because there is no negative marking so you can try as much as you want you can write as much as you want you can try things as much as you want maybe you are doing it rightly you don't know so maybe because of luck you will pass the exam you don't know that but then i am not going to consider all of you who has passed the examination i am going to only consider the top 5 of you or the top 2 of you in this case so if there are 100 people giving the exam i consider top 20 right in this case you can consider i mean this is not really a very good example because ridge regression does not consider top 20 it does not result into the el elimination of the coefficient it does not result into the elimination of the coefficient the coefficient remains the same and that makes okay that makes uh, lasso regression a little bit better in terms of explanation because it always tries to reduce the dimension in some sense so what we are doing over here is this is just a formula which you don't have to remember but it is simply trying to minimize okay it is simply trying to minimize okay minimize the sum of squared errors if you look at this if you look at this and if you simply forget this part okay if you forget this part okay just concentrate on this much part okay concentrate on this much part you don't have to look at this part right now okay concentrate on this much part you will come to know okay you will come to know that it is actually sum of squared errors right now if i take the eraser and if i get rid of this then beta is actually your values of the coefficients betas are the coefficient values and now if i get rid of this part then comes the other major thing which is my lambda and lambda is actually my tuning parameter it controls the strength of the l1 
penalty right so if lambda okay if lambda the thumb rule is and you can prove this also mathematically if lambda approaches infinity so it is infinitely big number then all of your coefficients are gone all of your coefficients are basically gone right all of your coefficients all of the coefficients are actually eliminated as lambda increases more and more coefficients are set to zero and eliminated but then there is a problem as lambda increases the bias will also increase because if the lambda is too big then you are concentrating your model only to let's say five out of those 50 features right which is wrong because you're not looking at all the variety of the data it's wrong for your model you should be looking at a lot of variety so that you can find the the uh, um, i mean the most uh, nearest it's a pattern right but if alpha is too small then the variance will increase if alpha is too small then the number of coefficients that stay behind in your model will be let's say <coughs> you have now consider all the 50 features right in any modeling technique you will see you will get rid of a few features why because they are unnecessary or maybe they have let's say multi collinearity problem and so on and so forth but now what is happening is if you have a very small alpha okay if you have a very small alpha then this term becomes very very small and hence you are actually taking the sum of square roots of all the variables <laughs> right if you look at this value see this value if this value okay if this value is very small like let's say 0.00001 then practically this this point can be ignored if this point is ignored then you basically have what sum of squared errors right you have your entire model with all the excess at the moment you increase this value okay the moment you increase this lambda value to a higher value let's say you are increasing it to a higher value let's say something like this okay it's a very very high value then that particular beta is getting penalized and for that matter in this case all the betas will get the penalization and hence this beta is gone and hence you don't have any model at all right because all of your coefficients are ultimately eliminated right so that's why we have to be very careful when we are choosing this value of beta right so now we are just going to give it a oh sorry let me just lesser regression yeah so no this is not this is not lesser regression this one is yeah okay so i'm just going to take this and i'm going to paste it into the chat window so that you can keep a copy and i'll also give this wikipedia page it's a, it's a really well written page i would say so strongly recommend that you really should be following it now let's create a lasso regression model and without doing any scaling we are going to fit my model okay so what i am going to do from sql and dot linear model import lasso the simple lasso you can see a lot of options here we will be looking at what these options are at a later stage or maybe we don't need to i just need to look at the bare minimal skeleton version of lasso so if you are importing lasso then that is what we are going to use for the regression purposes please be uh, uh, please note this this lasso and the ridge regression will be used or lasso technique and the ridge technique will also be used in case of classification problems okay they they have a different way uh, in which they will work and so on. so the mathematical expression is going to change in that case but the concept of regularization remains the same you have l1 and l2 l1 is where you have given negative marks to students so that they are automatically eliminated out of the class out of the exam and what is left out are the best of the best students and then you have l2 regularization where you're trying to treat every student equally right but then you will be giving more importance to your good students as opposed to your bad students right so let me now create the 10th model so lm10 is equal to lasso right now there is this uh, lambda parameter which i did not specify here okay let's take the default value let's see how it goes 
So I have X 10, 10. I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to say X test 10, Y train 10, Y test 10 is equal to 10 test split. And then I'm going to say X comma Y as you remember we said we are not going to take the scaled values without any scaling we are going to fit this model let's see how it goes and then uh, I have got this so uh, it should not be a scaled one so let me just quickly check if it is not a scaled one you see it is not scaled okay so it is cl clearly divided into a non-scaled kind of a data set and now what I'm going to do I'm going to take a, a LM10 my LM10 and I'm going to fit fit my model using x 10 10 and y 10 10 right now you see again it has taken it's it's definition is actually very similar to what you see in case of the ridge regression right so it has alpha and all the parameters and it has similar kind of a parameter as well a few of them are actually more okay a few more you see over here in case of lasso but this alpha parameter which you see over here right this is that lambda or the learning rate or you can also call the regularization parameter so that's the controller okay that's the control of how good or how bad you are doing the regularization so as we said if i have a very very big lambda i will have more of bias if i have very small lambda i will have more of variance so let's start with one we will see how it goes if it really helps us get a new model good if not then we are going to scrap it anyways right so let's see why pred 10 is equal to lm 10 dot predict okay x test this and now i'm going to see r2 score y pred 10 y test 10 my r2 score has actually decreased Okay, with this current value of alpha, my R2 score has decreased. What is my mean squared error? Mean squared error is y pred tab 10 and y test tab presser tab and this is what it is. My mean squared error has increased in this case with the default value of uh, lambda or alpha. Our R2 score score has decreased while the mean squared error has increased. Okay, now we're going to try a different value. So let's say alpha. I cannot make it too small. So I'm going to start with 0 0.001 and I'm going to take LM11 is equal to lasso alpha is equal to. right now what i'm going to do again i'm going to take that same thing and i'm going to paste it over here and i'm just going to change these to 11. okay i'm going to change the value 10 to 11 and then i'm going to do <coughs> this one so i'm going to simply pass this and now i have an alpha which is very small Okay, let's see how the R score thing is going to come up. So before that, I have to do the prediction. So I'll do the prediction now. And 11, and right? So let me see what is the R square score now. R square score, I'm just going to see. It has increased to 58.76. Okay, what happens if I increase this even more? See, 58.8. If I decrease this even more, it is not changing, right? So until a certain point in time, it worked, right? But after that, it did not work. Let's just find that value. I think this is that value only because if I go to, yeah right what if i increase this if i increase this you see my r square is actually going into negative values okay you look at what is going on over here it is going into negative value it it means i am doing a worst job 
let me try 0.05 this is also very good now what is the mean squared error uh, let me just check the mean squared error quickly i'm sure it will not be that good but this is exactly the same 59% of the variation is explained by the model right with a smaller value of alpha in this case and then the mean squared error is almost equal to 30 right so i can say that we see that for our case we did not get much better model okay we did not get much better model with lasso regression method even with lower values of alpha right so this is what we have seen already right so this is actually practically the end of what we do in case of a regression analysis so final model is my lm1 okay lm1 is my final model lm underscore one is my final model this is the model that i'm going to use so lm1 so let me just write this over here <clears throat> final model lm underscore one right this is that model and my intercept is this and my these are my coefficients right i can take these and i can try to create the equation and i will be able to explain that to my uh, stakeholders so for example i can take oh why i had that thing done right earlier so i'm just going to take that and come over here and then i'm simply going to put it over here and this time i'm also going to say columns is equal to okay so what i'm going to do one okay oh sorry so first is the feature and then So model coefficients is equal to this and I'm going to say I'm just going to print it and here is here are all the features uh, or the coefficients using which I can create my equation right I can create my equation using this and then I should be able to get the most effective or the least effective kind of uh, uh, the features which are adding to the model for example clearly rm is the most effective nox is the most defective right or it's a uh, rejective right so what i can say from here for every one unit increase in the value of nox that is a minus 16.7 decrease minus 16.7 unit decrease in my target value so my median house price value decreases okay it decreases because it is a minus sign so it decreases by a value of 16.69 for each one value increase in the value of nox right and the same way i can say for each one value increase in rm my medv increases by 3.54 units are you getting my point so this is how we can try to explain the model chas is also a very good uh, uh, thing so from here we can clearly we can uh, clearly write down the most important positive and negative the ones that we could clearly see with a very good um, minus or plus let's say value and we can take that and we can uh, uh, explain that to our stakeholders right that is one thing which is left which i think we did not do 
and that is something we may want to do we may not want to do that is entirely optional but usually uh, i mean i will not really uh, uh, suggest that you do that okay i mean it's not really something which you must do or otherwise i mean you are not uh, doing it right or so on so it's not kind of a very uh, hard and fast thing but i would strongly recommend that you must at least once look into it and that is one of the assumptions okay one of the assumptions which we have um in case of uh, in case of the uh, linear regression so what we assumed or one of the assumptions of linear regression is uh, out of the four or five assumptions that we have seen one of the assumptions were the error terms okay will have a normal distribution so if my error terms if i plot the error terms and the distribution of the error terms is close to normal or it is actually a normally looking distribution then i have a very good model so that's a final check of this lm1 thing and we are just going to check we are quickly going to check okay we are quickly going to check right uh, what is going to be uh, uh, the a kind of graphical view okay but i hope you have understood how to explain the model to your stakeholders but just for a quick check let's just uh, do this i think matplotlib is already there yeah matplotlib is there already okay so what i'm going to say uh, let's say i'm going to create a new figure fig is equal to plt dot figure okay now what i'm going to say sns dot distribution plot i'm going to use this function and i'm going to use okay i'm going to use a distribution of something with bin equal to uh let's say 20 we'll start with 20 see how it goes if it does not work we'll change it now the thing that i need here okay the thing that i need over here is my predictions okay so to do the predictions let's just do the predictions once more or we already have the predictions i know but let's just do it once more y pred final okay is equal to lm1 dot predict x test right so this is exactly what we are doing we are passing the testing data or in this case what we are going to do we are passing the testing data usually we pass the testing data and we get the predictions now what we are going to do we are going to pass we are going to pass or y train pred i'm going to name this and now instead of test we are going to pass the training well data right i am going to do a prediction on my training data i should be validating my model on what my testing data but now i am doing the opposite why because i just want to know what are the kind of errors that i have got while i did the training of the model right so x train is not to define why why x train is not to defined okay no problem x train is equal to train test split x y random state no but why why do i need to do that again let me just check i did an lm1 right where did it go let me just check where 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 yeah it's the one yeah extend one oh okay sorry extend one i did it with extend one so lm1 is using extend one okay very good so i'm just going to lead this and y train red one okay i'm going to say extend one right now what i'm going to do in this case i'm going to say y okay why the actual output of y which should be there in the training which is y train one and i will subtract okay i will subtract the prediction okay i will subtract the prediction so this subtraction this this operation over here it gives me the errors right and i would like to plot the errors i would like to plot the residuals of uh, of the model which are ultimately the errors right i am taking a bins of 20 
and then I'm going to uh, simply say uh, um, fig dot uh, s u p t i t l e. This is a function which I quickly wanted to show you. That's why I'm using it. So uh, I'm going to say error terms, and I'm going to use a font size of let's say 15. Okay. So this is a uh, plot heading. So it's kind of a heading that you can give. And then again, I'm going to do uh, a plt doc x label. Okay, plt dot x label, and on the x axis, I'll have the errors or the residuals. Right. Now I'm going to do a plt dot show. If I do a plt dot show, I get a graph. Okay, I actually get a curve. Now you look at this curve. It might not look like a normal graph because ideally you will expect a normal graph to look something like this, right? But what are the properties of a normal graph? The standard deviation is one, and the mean is zero. Now I am not able to find out what is the standard deviation in this case, but at least I can tell you that my mean is zero. So I have got a very good model where my error terms are normally distributed. So this is a proof, this is a testimony that I can be confident on my model. So when I go in front of my management, I can really tell them with confidence that, sir, what I'm actually telling you makes sense because I've already validated that my model is actually generalized, although it is explaining only 71, right? Uh, what was the uh, R2 score? Let's just check the R2 score. Why uh, PRED1 and why TEST1? I believe this was the case. No, it's not the case. Uh, what was the R2 score of LM1? Uh, LM1 intercept is Y test one, Y pred one, Y pred one, Y test one. Yeah, right. So we are explaining 71 percent. So I can just say this multiplied by 100. Okay, so this is the percentage. Okay, this is the percentage of variation explained. So I can even say round and I can say two. Right, so 71.21 percentage of the variation is explained in this model. Okay, and then I have a mean squared error of uh, testing versus let's say prediction, and I'm going to get a value of 30.11. So I do have some error, but this error is actually the least of all the 10 11 models that have fit. Right, so this is the least error um, model that I've got. Right, with the best R square score. Right, so I'm able to explain 71% of my data set. Right, so you should now be confident that you, should, you can go in the front of uh, your clients and you can explain them the model. Right, now a quick thing about intercepts before we close, let's say for today. Uh, I, I just realized I have another thing to attend, so hence we may have to cut it short. So let's continue from the next session with the classification type of things. Uh, and we are also going to look at something which is grid search cross validation as well uh, in due course of that itself. But I just wanted to tell you something related to intercept. And this is a very, very important thing which people often misunderstand. So before we close the session, let's quickly look into a very important concept called intercept. What people think usually, and we already know why they think so, is because if I have a simple linear regression, which has only one feature X, and I'm trying to predict one target, which is Y, and my outcome, right? My outcome, give me one minute. Okay, my outcome or my model is something like this. If this is my model, this becomes my intercept. Okay, this becomes my intercept, right? This is the intercept value. And this angle is my slope, right? So this is my slope or this is my coefficient. So let's say this is theta one. Okay, so my equation becomes y is equal to theta zero, which is this, y is equal to theta zero plus theta one, theta one, x one, right? People think that Intercept means the by default value of y, and that is wrong. That is not the by default value of y. You have a data set here. Let's say we have a data set over here where we have taken a list of features and the coefficients, right? So we have here by taking a list of features and the coefficients. Here we can clearly see we have how many features? 13 features. This does not mean there can only be 13 features. 
you can have 23 features you may have had 43 features you may have had 103 features as well it depends on how you have collected the data that the number of features are actually decided just that we have collected the data in or using certain research uh, methodology or some kind of a sampling or some way of doing the experiment because of which we have ended up with 13 factors or 13 features this does not mean that the median price of houses in boston can only be explained by these 13 features and there can be anything else maybe there are better researchers than us right who are doing a very extensive kind of a research and based their research they have i don't know 58 features right so this intercept clearly means that if everything else becomes zero for this model then what is the default value that is known as the intercept in other words if i don't consider any of these features okay then also my price of the house the median price of the house is 37 multiplied by 1000 usd right the usd 1000 was the scale right of this of this uh, uh, target value so approximately 37 multiplied by 1000 so 37000 us dollars is the median price of any house in the boston city if i don't consider any of these specific 13 variables or its impact so it, or in other words if these 13 features that i have selected as part of my experiment has no effect whatsoever or is assumed to have no effect on the output on the target then my median house price value becomes this right 37.78 i'll say 37.78 thousand us dollars right or maybe i can even do it in a better way i can simply take this and let's say multiply with 1000 i get this value and i can take a round and go to the end and say two i have to come to the front once more and i can say this so the by default without considering any of these 13 features if i consider them as null or not really relevant or they are not playing any role for a certain apartment even in that case also uh, price of my apartment okay a price of my apartment will anyways be thirty seven thousand seven hundred and seventy six dollars forty six cents on an average right this is the way how you explain the intercept intercept does not mean that even if everything else is zero then my price is this everything else cannot be zero because it depends how you have done the experiment is what is actually defining what the list of that everything else is going to contain right so please keep this in mind because this is a very very important thing which people do a lot of mistakes in okay uh, so keeping that in mind uh, let's make a close uh, i'll stop my sharing uh, we are going to continue tomorrow then uh, obviously from tomorrow uh, if you have any questions please do let me know or else we are going to continue let's say uh, with the classification use cases right so let's uh, i think we can close okay yeah. thank you rohi Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night.